Let us all that we can to build a better future. That being said, Daniel, you've got a story for the people. What's going on, man? Yeah, okay, so I thought this was interesting. We have a video from CNBC, the place where you go when uh, billionaires need to vent about how hard life is for them mm-hmm. in this day and age. And I'm sure we, we all we all feel it um, by not having health care. Um, so I thought this was interesting. We've got a video we're going to play, but effectively, if you read between the lines, the billionaire is saying, hey, if the Fed doesn't pay us, the inflation's going to keep being a problem. It'd mm-hmm. be a real shame if inflation kept going up Let's see it this video. Sent a series of tweets uh, a few moments ago, and I want to read you one of them, Stephen. I want your reaction. I want everybody's reaction. Uh, among, he's talking about inflation being out of control, but he does say, and I'm quoting now, how does this downwards market spiral end? It ends when the Fed puts a line in the sand on inflation and says it will do whatever it takes and then demonstrates it is serious by immediately raising rates to neutral and committing to continue to raise rates until the inflation genie is back in the bottle. Stocks of real businesses, in quotes, are cheap once again. Markets will soar once investors can be confident that the days of runaway inflation are over. Let's hope the Fed gets it right. And I guess, Seach, before I have you react to that, Steve, investors aren't confident yet that A, runaway inflation is in fact over, or that the Fed is going to get it right. So you've got two problems colliding with one another, which is why you've got such a degree of uh, instability in the stock market, no? I, that, that's what I was saying at the beginning of the show, Scott. But I think you have a Fed chairman that has, has said that he's going to be incredibly data dependent. And my sense is that the, the data is indicating that we're slowing rather quickly to one of the point that, points that Josh made. So I think ripping off the Band-Aid, going to neutral, which is 230 230- 235 right now. That's an incredibly large move. I think it would challenge his credibility, honestly, because he just said that we are going to move 50 at the next two meetings and then be data dependent. I know, but isn't his credibility that. already in question? I mean, some are advocating like Jim Cramer for 100 basis points immediately. Well, now, whether Jim you Kramer believe that or it. not, um, you know, Ackman's not in, in the camp by himself suggesting that the Fed just needs to be no, much more no, aggressive, no much quicker and just get it over with. And the markets will adjust and then we can move forward. Steve, what, what's your reaction to what Mr. Ackman is suggesting on Twitter? Well, I'm kind of glad he's not running the Fed, I guess, right now. Um, I, I think that would be incredibly disruptive, more disruptive to markets than it's been already. I think I think Bill, like a lot of other folks, is impatient with the process. I think think Josh Brown is 100 percent correct. It should have begun. Okay, so here's what I want to say. Again, I love how everyone there is like, it's not our fault. We don't even have to mention how much it's not our fault that this is happening the way it is. Definitely not our fault that most of that's the other thing that they don't talk about ever. Like this is not mentioned on TV news ever, even though it's beyond peer in terms of fact finding. Most of the inflation we're dealing with is profit padding. That's where most of it comes from. Most of what we're dealing with today. Why why is gasoline near here like $5.60 a gallon? Because they can charge it and you're used to paying it. So that's what they'll keep doing. Why is gas? I think that I look, so it's like gas should be back down to like what? three fifty four a gallon. Uh, something of that nature right now. It's, I mean, it's the, the thing that's being dealt with has already passed, but because they can claim that there's this big issue and then claim inflation as everyone's saying it and the news is reporting it. It's exactly where it was or exactly where it is right now. And so there are these guys on CNBC, which are owned by these same companies, all going together, crying about how they're not getting free money. They're literally like, oh, my God, why don't the Fed give us zero interest loans anymore? It's so unfair if, we, if they don't do that, we'll have, you know, inflation will keep going up, even though, again, that's not what make, is making inflation go up. Mm-hmm. Every, all these companies that are complaining about this are the ones causing it because there's no national, there's no counterpoint that's large enough against the conglomeration of 92% of U.S. media owned by six companies that can fire back and point out the obvious like we're doing here, which is, the inflation problem is mostly self-imposed. Yes, there are supply chain shortages and some products are not in, which, by the way, is also their fault because those supply chains are in place because they didn't like having warehouses. Because it would make 
profit margins go up. All of this that we're dealing with is a consequence of every 90 days having to make 3% more money and not thinking ahead of that. That stripped down workers so that no one had any money to buy anything so that the second that people were out of jobs, people had were not able to... It's like, sure, people. a lot of people didn't get evicted in the pandemic, although a lot of people did. But those that didn't are still in massive debt and then got evicted after anyway and are still in debt. And those companies still that had that money that are in that made all this happen still bought up all those housing units, still bought up those apartments. So the same people that are on that TV complaining about the way things are and how the Fed is not giving them money are the people that are most responsible for making this happen. So this billionaire, Bill Ackman, he is a uh, founder and CEO of a hedge fund investment corporation. Um, and, you know, it's it's interesting that you're seeing these billionaires saying, give us more, give us more. You're seeing these billionaires demanding more from a system. And they want, they want socialism. Let's just be absolutely clear. Well, I was, I was, I was going to yeah. get to that. But, oh, but, I'm but sorry, I'm sorry. The, the point is, it's like the, the fact that they keep on begging more and more, they're, they're becoming mm-hmm. what they are telling the American people is terrible, and that is socialism. And this is what we're in. It, well, the system we're in is uh, is where socialism only for the rich. Everyone, everyone else, rugged capitalism. Dare I say it, it's not even rugged capitalism. But how dare you get point. food stamps? How dare food stamps exist? As how dare give. you get food stamps? How dare you get? Uh, how about this? How, how about this one? How dare there be free education for kindergartners up to the up to high school? How how dare, dare how how dare we put money into our infrastructure and all these other things. And I just find it just so ironic that these billionaires who, let's face it, they, they crashed the economy and they got away with it. They got away with it because they bought our politicians. These people have no soul whatsoever. They have no compassion. And don't, they don't even recognize the fact that they are destroying the future of America only for just to get a few more bucks in. They only have short-term goals. Nothing is ever long-term for these hedge fund managers. Nothing is ever long-term for these Wall Street investors. They don't care about long-term investment. And by looking at short-term policies, by only having such a narrow path and only choosing just to go on this pathway of, well, simple, quick buck, you know what's going to lead to? The further stagnation and eventual collapse of the United States. By the way, did you see um, the first episode of Love, Death, Robots? On Netflix, I've been recommended by the lot. I know you've been talking about it. So many people. So the answer is no. I haven't yeah. seen so any they, of it I'll, whatsoever. They do. It's actually, but it's very poetic. They kind of do a little commentary on what we're talking about after the crash happens, when it happens, and um, you know these robots are kind of going through, looking at like what happened, how everyone tried to survive. I saw a commercial like where, where, one, where one robot's like saying, "Ah, they were mean to robots and they were killed by robots." Yeah. Yeah, well, that, that was the joke in it. But they're like going through like all the different levels of socioeconomic survival strategy, and they're mm-hmm. like these people tried to you know surround themselves with barbed wire and guns, mm-hmm. and then they ran out of food because none of them could know how to farm or you know okay. do any of that stuff. Then they go to all like the billionaire safe haven. And it's like, huh? Turns out if you put a bunch of billionaires together in one spot, and um, you don't have any like you know the working class to actually support them and everything. As soon as their automated machines break, their entire system collapses and they have no idea what to do. The only people that survived were the cats on Mars. <laughs> Wait, how to catch them? Okay, never yeah. mind. Don't spoil yeah, it. Yeah, no, that's it. I'm going to say. Don't, don't spoil it for me. All right, I got to find out how the cats on Mars survive. But if it gets to this path where uh, the cats on Mars survive, you know what? Good luck, little kitties, because uh, you know what? These politicians, remember, we have Democratic and Republican lawmakers and when they see these rich bastards, when they see these rich individuals, they listen to them 100%. It goes back to what I've said on the show so many times, what other independent media networks have said so many times. Our politicians, their number one constituents, their number one people that they are going to listen to are the people that donate to them the most money. So anytime you hear anyone say to you that we can reform the Democratic Party, that we can do things and change the party and system yeah. within, or we can attach a movement to the Democrats or anything like that. No, it's going to get corrupted because you got these head fund managers who, again, they are going to be the first people that are going to whisper in the ears of the Democratic lawmakers, Democratic leadership, and yes, Republican leadership. But I'm only talking right now. I want to talk about the Democrats because it's so easy to talk about the Republicans. 
I'm, I, I, there, there's nothing that Daniel and I can say about the GOP that has not already been said. If you want, if you want to get enraged at the Republican Party, watch TYT or Majority Report. But we got to talk about it's, the Democrats. Oh my the God, Democrats I'm let convinced. this stuff happen. I saw TYT and then I realized the Republican Party is bad. It was just this giant revelation that was super useful and helped me alter my life. And they told me that the Democratic Party has flaws but is ultimately good. And so I put my faith in them. And then years later in the future is when I realized I probably shouldn't have. No, you, you, you can't put trust into any of these two-party uh, systems that we have, this two-party system that we have. So, Daniel, with this story, though, it's, it's, it's interesting. We're, we're seeing everything repeat itself again. And the problem is inflation is rising up. Yeah. Gas prices is rising up. You know, I, I went to get gas at Costco just a few days ago on Monday, right? And it was close to $5, but it was the cheapest area. $5, to, so that's pretty good for Chicago. I know. But, like, well, Costco policy is it has to be cheaper than the yeah. surrounding five, I think, five-mile radius or one-mile radius. You should or open like up a, a gas station within three miles and just always be out of $3 gas. Oh, yeah. man. Oh man, Costco would be so angry. <laughs> no, but I mean, but that's that that is that is something that's happening. And when I see stories about people living on the West Coast or uh, f- further on the East Coast, where gas is like almost six dollars, reaching the seven dollars, the people that are pulling the great chain. Got mm-hmm. that from Bioshock. Yeah, isn't that it's, it's, isn't that a great analogy I know, for I know. this era? I know. Isn't it such a great Bioshock analogy? Bioshock is such a great analogy for this era. It's these billionaires. These billionaires who also, again, these billionaires who view social programs as parasitic. Mm-hmm. And I'm, 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 I'm glad we, we could talk about because well, like, Do you know Andrew Ryan, just an anagram? For, for Ayn Rand. Yeah, yes, of I course. I knew such, that. Yeah. It was, it was very subtle. It's such a it very this subtle. Is, this is our Twitch channel. You yeah. got to go check it out. It's yeah, such I, a great game. Yeah, so so it's the thing is I had I had a personal game I was playing for Bioshock, and then I have the, the, the mm-hmm. Twitch game that I'm going to play. I got to finish that up. Can't leave. Hey, Adidas not glorious until it's finished. Yes. But with... How you see these billionaires act, AOC and these other progressives think then all automatically, oh, if we get enough people to vote progressive in the Democratic Party, it will change. That's not how it works because these billionaires have built a system that is very laissez-faire for them. And they've put on the guise that there's somehow this great debate between two parties. There yeah. isn't one. Yeah. It's all of us that are suffering. It's all of us that the are struggling. The only debate is happening with the supporters that don't realize that there is no real debate happening. Mm-hmm. That the only debate that's happening is getting people to argue amongst themselves so that no debate actually happens. Mm-hmm. What what I would say at this point uh, is the politicians are just the workhorse for the billionaires. The politicians are a protected class that listen to the billionaires, people like – and Andrew Ryan, for example, mm-hmm. right? Even though he's a fictitious character, there are individuals like him. And at this point, Donald Trump running again in 2024 makes no difference whatsoever to these billionaires because they're still going to get rich. They got rich under Trump. They got rich under Obama. They got rich under uh, Bush Jr., Bill Clinton, Bush uh, Sr., and it was it all starting with Reagan. So what's the difference under Biden? They're still getting rich. All these billionaires are getting rich, and they want more from the government. They built socialism for the rich and they're passing it off as somehow capitalism soon the fastest way to buy a vote is going to give people soup at a soup kitchen yeah and that's what that's well, that, well that's, it, that's chicago's history. you're not you're, you're not off you're you're actually actually you know what it's it's more real than than you ever realized because it's a little bit on point we have our own millionaire um god why am i ah uh, which one uh the, the guy who's running for mayor now i'm forgetting his name oh i'm uh Oh, no. I'm going to look at you until you come up with a name. Oh, no. Willie Wilson. Yeah, Willie, Willie Wilson. Willie Wilson. He's, he, he did another gas run. I'm sure he did. So the thing is, like, twice. So for those of you who don't know, if you're not subscribed to Chicago Corner, he did another gas run uh, for uh, Chicagoans. So if you want to get your gas, you know, if, if you're in your car fill up with gas, Willie Wilson will pay for it, right? He did that not once but twice. Mm-hmm. He's doing it for a third time. Fastest way to get votes. Buy him gas. I mean, buy him it, gas. It's, it's, or buy it's soup. today's soup. I mean, gas is soup if you really don't think about it that much. Yes. And 